In the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna share with you my top 50 design hacks in Adobe Illustrator that will make you a better designer and will make your workflow a lot faster. Now, number one is type on a path. You can click T on your keyboard and then left click on any path. I've got this squiggly line. I can click on that and it's gonna generate text on there. And then I can just type in the word. I can then use the eyedropper. You can also go right click on the T type tool and you can see type on a path as well to get that. Number two is fast duplication. All you gotta do is select your object or font and just hold Alt. And if you hold Shift, it will keep it in line at a 90 degree angle. And then once you let go, it duplicates the text. I can do it again. If you just hold Alt, then it will just duplicate just like this. Next, we have change case. So I can select any lowercase or uppercase. I can go to the top menu, click type. Then you wanna go to change case and click uppercase. Boom, just like that. You've got heaps of options, lowercase, title case, and also sentence case as well. Number four, you can actually justify text with a simple shortcut. If you wanna justify this body of text left, I'll click Control, Shift, and L to go left. You can do Control, Shift, R to go right. And if you wanna center it back, you can click Control, Shift, C to go into the center. And there you go, you've got a centered text. Number five is all about kerning. A lot of designers don't use kerning, but kerning is the space between letters. So you can see here, I can kern a single letter. If I click in between a letter, all you gotta do is hold Alt and tap the left or right arrow keys to move that along. If you wanna kern everything, you just press Control A to select everything. And then I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna tap right and it's going to make the kerning space a lot bigger. You can always go back as well and make text tighter by clicking Alt and then tapping left and I'll make it very, very tight as you can see. Number six is letting. Now letting is the space between the lines. If I don't wanna make this space a bit wider, all I gotta do is select the text box and then hold Alt and then tap the down key as you can see. And if I hold it down, it will just keep generating downwards. So you can see that's a big letting. If I hold Alt and tap the up arrow key, it will make it a lot more tighter as you can see there, but obviously now it's not readable. <laughs> Number seven is saving a custom workspace. All you gotta do is go to window, go to workspace, and then you can actually use any of these presets. I've got mine saved right here, but if I go to say essentials, you can see my whole workspace will change. I can go back and click on mirror, which is my workspace I like to work with because I can easily move around my panels if you wanna make adjustments, just click workspace. Then you can click manage workspaces and I can rename the workspace. I can delete it really easily. Number eight is you can actually snap windows in your panels. As you can see here, I can click and drag a panel all the way to the right and snap it to the side of my document. And then you can see I can just put my mouse and drag out to scale that out. You can actually snap it anywhere you want. You can put it on the left side if you want. You can put it back underneath or the left side or in a tab of one of these panels. If you wanna copy the style of a text, all you gotta do is select your text, press I for the eyedropper and left click on the font that is there. Just make sure that the text is live and it should copy the same exact style of that font. Next up, you can actually save character styles and paragraph styles just like in InDesign. I'm gonna select this header and I'm gonna go to window, type, go to character styles, and then you can see you've already got a H1. You can basically press plus and call it whatever you want. You can call it heading. And now if I go to the bottom here and click heading, you can see it applies that same text. You can also do the same for a paragraph. As you can see, I've already got it there, paragraph. And now if I tap this one and click paragraph, it changes to the same text. So it's easy to style your text very, very fast. Number 12, you can actually move through your document by holding the space bar and left clicking and dragging and it will move you across all around the document in a breeze. If you wanna zoom in on a document, all you gotta do is hold Alt and use your mouse wheel to zoom all the way in, right in as you can see there. And then I can zoom back out just like that. That's the fastest way to zoom into a document. Now we've got the smooth tool. All you gotta do is select your path or your text, go to object, go down to path and go down to smooth. And then all you gotta do is drag this all the way to the right and it will smooth out your paths as you can see that from wonky to a lot more smoother. Next, you can actually join paths by pressing control J. If I get press A for the direct selection tool, just gotta select two anchor points that are cut off or not joined, press control J and it will see it will join just like that. Next, you can actually save graphic styles very easily. I've already got some already saved here, but for example, say I like this gradient, all you gotta do is select the text or the object that has that style, 
click the plus button and now you can see I've got that gradient style. I'm gonna just make a square and click on it and you can see I've got all these other styles as well. It just makes adding styles very fast. Another cool trick is that if you don't want all the panels and the windows, all you gotta do is press F to go into full screen mode and it would actually make everything a lot easier to see. It gets rid of all the tabs and the sidebars. Tap F for the third time and it should go back to normal. My next little tip is actually mapping your F1 keys to your most favorite tools. If you wanna go to edit, go to keyboard shortcuts, then type in something like clipping mask, make sure you go to menu commands, clipping mask, there you go. And then all you wanna do is click this and then type something like F1 and then you want to okay it. Just make sure that there's nothing conflicting with that same keyboard shortcut. My next hack is for people who actually wanna trace over their sketches. First off, what you wanna do is just go to your layers panel. You can see I've got a sketch right here. All you gotta do is double click on the layer and then you gotta click template mode and then it will automatically dim the images. You can change this to whatever percent you want, maybe 30%, I'll call this sketch. And another cool trick is that you can actually change colors just like that and I'll click okay. And then now that layer is locked and ready to go, I'll make a new layer and call it design and then I can start sketching away at my B. Number 20 is you can actually change any letter using glyphs. So instead of trying to make a copyright symbol by yourself manually, all you gotta do is go to type, click on glyphs. This will open the glyphs menu just like here. I press T for the type tool and I can actually change any letter and any symbol. So for example, I'm just gonna delete all this text and then go to one of the copyright symbols you can see I'm just gonna change the font and now you can see I've got copyright symbols all I gotta do is double click and it can add anything you can do arrows you can do a whole bunch of stuff as you can see there without doing it manually you can actually recolor anything without even doing it manually in the swatches just go to edit edit colors and then you just click recolor artwork you can also use AI now if you want you've got recolor all I gotta do is just drag this big circle like that and it's going to change the colors so i can change it to any type of color i want next we've got auto spell check all you're going to do is to turn it on is go to edit click on spelling and make sure it's ticked on if it's off you won't see any red lines but when you turn it on you can see it has the lines and all you got to do is press t for the title so you can left click once on a word right click and you get the words pop up just like this and now i can easily fix all my spelling mistakes and typos. Another cool thing is that you have mirror mode. So I'm gonna select this object. I'm gonna go to object, repeat and click on mirror. And basically what it does, it's gonna mirror everything you create on one side and put it on the other side. And so all you gotta do is just focus on one side. So for example, I can make something like this. And you can see whatever I made there, it's mirroring it right on that side. You can also adjust the space there, but it's great if you wanna do something geometric or symmetrical, or you're creating like a logo that needs like an illustration. I wanna show you how to use the blend tool. All you gotta do is press W on one path and then left click on the secondary path and you'll get this effect. All you gotta do is hold Alt, left click once and I can go to specific steps to actually change how many steps there are. And I'm gonna decrease that and you get this really cool effect. Number 25, layer targeting. You wanna to go to a document that has a lot of layers. All you gotta do is right next to this circle, you wanna left click once and you'll get a square with the color on it. It's gonna select everything within that specific layer and then I can literally drag and move everything around. So the background layer, you can see I'm moving it all at once. And then if you wanna move it to a different layer, I can drag it all the way up and I can drag it all the way down to any layer I want. So if I go back and maybe I drag to the top layer, you can see it will cover all the design just like that. Did you know that you can actually package up your file as well? So you just wanna to go to file, then you can click package. You'll get a box pop up that says where you wanna save it to. Just click on the folder, find the location. I can just go to downloads folder. It will copy the links, the images, or the contents within that file. It will save it into that folder. I'm gonna open up that folder and you can see I've got the AI folder, I've got all the fonts in there, and I've got the links to all the images that I've used inside that file. The next hack, did you know you can actually save any object as a symbol? You can see here, I've got this step-by-step this -step graphic here. I can select that all, then go into my symbols panel, drag and drop that in, and then change it from a movie clip to graphic, and then I can call it uh, process steps or whatever it is. Press OK, and then and now every time I open up a new file, I can reuse this as a symbol. As you can see, select, click break link, and now I can edit anything, the text, 
the colors as well if I want. Next one, we can actually duplicate any object. So what you wanna do is when you duplicate something or do an action, all you gotta do is press Control D. As you can see that, and it will just automatically do the same action you just did previously. Next, you know, you can actually swap out the fill and the stroke. I'm gonna select this object, press Shift X, and it will swap out that stroke to a fill. And then in the swatch panel, you can see it swaps. The next cool trick is you can actually use the scroll wheel in any parameter bar to increase by 10 points. So I've got this font here, and you can see up the top, I've got the space, uh, the, the amount of points. All I gotta do is use my mouse wheel over it without even typing, and it's gonna increase it. If I hold shift, it will increase by 10 points. As you can see there, thing, even if I wanna do it in a transparency panel, you see the opacity here, put my mouse over it, use the mouse wheel, hold shift to do it by 10 to increase the numbers. For this one, you can actually align any object to one specific object. I've got the align tool right here, and I'm gonna select three of these circles, but what you wanna do when you select multiple objects, you wanna click, left click once. I wanna align the purple and the orange to the blue. I'm gonna left click on the blue one once, then all I gotta do is click on one of these align tools. Either I can do align to top, so these ones will align to the top of the blue, or I can you can do center as well, and it will bring everything into a center position. Or if I do align bottom, it will align everything to the, the object on the bottom. So it's super cool. For this trick, what you wanna do is go to preferences to smoothen out real-time objects when you're moving them around. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to performance and click on real-time drawing and editing. If you click that off, basically when you move around images, you can see it creates a preview and then when you let go, it will, but when we turn this on, now when we move images, it will move it and it'll be a lot smoother as you can see here. As you can see, there's no preview, it's just live. I wanna show you another trick on how to reduce lag. You can actually go to edit, click on preferences, I'm gonna go down to performance again, and you wanna decrease the history shades to 50 instead of keeping 100. You also wanna reduce tick off animated zoom as well. And this should reduce some lag if you're experiencing that. I wanna show you how to add a grain effect that is actually a vector grain, not a pixelated grain or raster grain. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna go to effect, go down to pixelate. You can use calf tone or even mesotint, which is really cool. And you can see I can do medium dots, fine dots, grainy dots, whatever you want. I'll go to fine dots, click okay. And you can see this. Now all I gotta do from here, go to object and expand appearance. And then all you wanna do is image trace. Now once you image trace, you should get something like this. And I'm just gonna increase the threshold and increase the noise a little bit. You can play around with the paths, the corners, and you will get something like this. If you want a different effect, bump the noise all the way down. You can see here's another result as well. Now my next hack is for those who want to flip something very fast. All you gotta do is have your transform panel. You can open that up in the window, as you can see. Select your object, click on the three lines and click flip horizontal. You can also flip vertical as well and you can do on images and text and logos and anything. So flip vertical and there you go, it flips it. Instead of trying to rotate it yourself and figure it out. Now this hack allows you to rearrange upwards in seconds. I've got this presentation that I did for a client last year. I'm gonna go to my upwards, click three dots and click rearrange all upwards. You can actually change the rows, you can change the spacing as well. So if I wanna reduce the spacing, you can change the columns as well. And for example, maybe I just want like four columns, I'll press okay. And you can see it rearranges everything just like that. Now this tag will save you heaps of time. You can actually copy and paste to all artboards in Illustrator. So if I select, say, this title card, I'm gonna press Control C to copy it. Then all you gotta do is press Control Shift Alt V. And there you go, it will paste any object, any text, or anything that you copy onto all the artboards all in just one go. Now this hack, you can actually retain the same stroke size when you scale up any object or path that has a stroke on it. So I've got this stroke, all I gotta do is go to my transform panel, click the three dots, and you can see it says scale strokes. If I turn this off, it will, it will change the size of the stroke. As you can see, it's getting thinner as I'm making it bigger. And if I'm making it smaller, you can see it will go thick. If I want to retain the same size, all I've got to do is just tick scale strokes and effects on, and then now when I scale, it keeps the same size of the stroke. Now I want to show you how to export a bunch of images in one go. You want to press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. You can also go to export and export for screens. Once you do this, you'll get pop-up. You can actually use assets, so anything 
objects, you can do that. But I'm going to do the artboard section. So what I can do is I can select all my artboards if I want. I can rename them. But the cool thing is you can add multiple files. So I've got a PNG. I can add a JPEG as well. And I can also add, say, a SVG. Now, when I go to save this, I'll just go into downloads folder and we'll create a subfolder and then click export. It will save all those files as the three that are file types that I set it up. Now you can see all the files are right here. Did you know you can actually save PDF presets? For example, all I gotta do is press Control Alt S, go down to PDF, and I'm gonna click save. And all you gotta do is go select all your options that you want. So go to compression, choose the options, go to general, you know, do all that. And then you can see I've actually got one saved. All you gotta do is click the top right button, save your preset, and you can call it, you know, large files or whatever. And click OK, and then every time you load up and you want to export, it will pop up in there. Here's a quick way to edit and scale the pattern. All you got to do is select your pattern, like press S on your keyboard, hold Alt, left click once, you get the scale option up. Now, if you just want to scale the pattern, untick transform objects and click transform patterns. Now, all I got to do is increase it or decrease it, as you can see. If I want to make it really small, I can do that, or I can make it really big, and then press OK. And then once you do that, you have it this. And then what I recommend is saving that swatch. So then for next time, you've got multiple versions now, as you can see. Did you know you can actually clean up vector points really easily? If you've got empty anchor points in your document or you've got empty text boxes, just go to Object, Path, and click Clean Up. And it'll, you'll see you'll get rid of all these three things. Click OK and you can see it cleans it up. So there's no more points or any empty text box. This hack allows you to select multiple objects really fast. So all I gotta do is select any object. It can be text or it can be an icon. I can go to select at the top, click same, and I wanna click fill color. You can also do opacity, stroke color, weight, font families, and blending mode. So if I click fill color, it's gonna select everything in my document with that same pink color. So now you can see I can drag everything and everything has that same pink color. Now this hack is to make any logo or object adapt to a shape. So all I gotta do is select this shape and this word mark I created, go to object, envelope distort, and go make with top object. It's going to mold that logo or text to that specific shape as you can see there. And then I can expand it, scale it as well, which is super cool. I can add some more text if I want. This next little trick allows you to select any object inside a group. So you can see I've got these grouped elements. All I gotta do is double click on my mouse and then within that group I can now move around any object freely as you can see just like that it makes it easier to edit and in the top left you can see how many layers you are in as you can see there's a clip group group I can click back on that as well to go back or press escape to exit that and now you can see I'm back at the beginning now this is how you can make your file size the smallest it can be what you want to do is you want to go to swatches symbols and graphic styles and if you have any brushes as well you want to delete those you could do this by clicking the three lines at the top right corner. Go down to select all unused. Then go to your little rubbish bin. Click on that and click delete. And I'm going to do this for all of these just like this. Number 49, you can actually use freeform gradients. As you can see, instead of just doing a generic simple gradient like this, you can actually go click on freeform, press G on your keyboard, and then I can click and add as many colors as I want. As you can see, I can move it around, I can increase the radius. And the last hack is if you want non-destructive design in Illustrator, then use the appearance panel. So I've got my appearance panel here. In this panel, I can add effects. So for example, I can add distortions, I can add a glow, I can add a drop shadow. So maybe I wanna add a drop shadow, and we'll go maybe dark red like this. If I wanna change the color of the text, click on the fill, and then we can go yellow like this, or maybe let's go orange. And I can add strokes. I can add multiple fills as well. You can add so many different things. And the cool thing is, once you do any type of edits, I can actually turn off all of them at once. So you can just click on the eyeball and I have my text here. It's non-destructible. And if I wanna edit the text, let's just turn everything back on. I can change it just like this. So those are my 50 hacks in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment and hit the subscribe button for more content just like this. If you wanna see some other Illustrator hacks, you can check out this video right here and watch me show you that.